Um, my name is uh, Nicolas Garcia, um, and my pronouns are he, him. Um, I am a uh, Chicano farmer in Kansas City, Missouri at uh, Treehouse Urban Farm and Nursery. Um, I run the, uh, the Urban Farm and Nursery with, uh, under really, I, I need to say the direction of my wife and partner, uh, Sarah Garcia. I'm in Kansas City, Missouri, which is a mid-sized Midwest uh, city of a, mm, roughly half a million people. Our urban farm um, is in a suburban neighborhood of Kansas City, Missouri um, called Waldo. Um, and uh, we have roughly one acre, actually just under an acre. We, we like to call ourselves not a small farm, but a nano farm. Um, I mean, we aren't even under the radar of <laughs> USDA at all. So some perennial um, berry bushes, uh, strawberries, blackberries, raspberries, gooseberries, um, and annuals uh, that are chiles primarily. Um, and we use those for making, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, added value products um, uh, like uh, preservation rubs and hot sauces. Um, and then herbs uh, for purposes of seasoning, um, but also medicine and also sacred herbs um, for ceremony. Uh, another facet of our farm is that we are a um, nursery so that we can get other people growing. Uh, and uh, we focus entirely on the nursery is it's all edibles and natives. Um, because, well, sometimes you get a native that's also an edible and medicinal, which is awesome. Um, but we believe that um, not only does a, uh, especially in the urban core, need uh, more uh, nutritional options, um, but also um, to promote and provide ecology for future generations, we need to not just think about the people here um, in, in the flesh, but also the environment that they live in. And having a robust uh, urban ecology, um, we believe is foundational to a sustainable future. How did you access land? What were some challenges you faced? It, it took a good year of us looking for land access. Um, this particular spot, um, after looking all around town, um, uh, I will say was acquired um, after being unsuccessful of being able to finance um, our own spot. It was financed um, through my wife's generational wealth. Granted, there are people who are able to go and get these bank loans or, or FDA loans, and that's great. We were not able to. Um, at the time, honestly, I, I've only just recently become more aware of these USDA and FDA loans, um, which is great. But at the time, we, you know, urban agriculture was kind of a newer thing to us, and and. Uh, like a new concept. And it's only recently the, that the FDA is even like looking at us. So we we're trying to do something and we had ad, even looked at rural land, but even rural land in Kansas and Missouri um, was inaccessible at the time at, for our, the finances that we were able to, to acquire. I myself having a whole lot of student loan debt, but I mean, it was very much so, a, okay, well, here's your land access. Um, you still got to like it. <laughs> work it, <laughs> finance it other than land access. And even that is that right there is a struggle in and of itself. But we're very fortunate to have had access to this land. It took three years to grow our soil. And that was something that was very um, planned um, on when we came here because it was a greenhouse you know, from the time of DDT, we were unsure about what the soil quality would be. And rather than invest a lot in um, soil tests that just add more cost in, we decided to essentially rip out the soil and build soil for three years before we planted anything. So just like in rural setting, uh, water um, is, is definitely one of those things. 
Um, and in our situation, we actually have two water access through our home and through the farm site. And unfortunately, because the farm site has a commercial like water access, we have to essentially pay two water bills, one of which we don't even use. We have to pay like 120 bucks a month just for having the, um, uh, what is it? It's like ease of access, <laughs> which is uh, a fight we have to take to the city. Um, we're planning on doing this year because <laughs> it's like thousands of dollars over the last several years that we're paying for something we don't even use. Um, I would hope that with future farm bill legislation, we would have a means put in for water access in rural and in urban markets. How secure does your access to land feel? The, the land is already paid off, um, which is amazing. Um, and as long as we're able to make taxes on it each year, then, you know, which is a couple thousand dollars, um, we'll be able to keep it. Uh, now, Kansas City is going through some, like all cities in the Midwest, are going through some weird growing pains, whereas property taxes have gone up about 20% this last year. And before that, it was about 7%. And, you know, it like, is it going to reach um, this, you know, critical mass that we won't be able to hold on to that? Um, if projections keep up, um, maybe not, maybe I'm not so secure. Um, so yeah, the property taxes need to, to be kept in a living, you know, uh, rate. Um, but again, this is my dream and hopefully I can like live it out by keeping access, uh, here. <laughs>